So you filming? That, that means yes. Thumbs up means yes. Okay. Hi. Um. So it's finally happening. A lot of my friends know I've had this 116 inch Skyling NG sitting here for going on six months now, and I've been procrastinating about opening it. And it's a bit of a rainy day, and Dan's generously decided to offered, I should say, to film it for me and for everyone else. So hopefully this is a bit of fun. This is kind of a bit of a holy grail kind of built for me. I've been really looking forward to this. I have the 91 inch. I currently compete with the 104 inch. And now I'm going to soon start competing with the 116 inch. So this will be the first part of a build series on this NG. Uh, I'm going to do my best to cover what's actually going to be useful to people building one. I think if I go over every detail in this build, the series will just be too long and I think by this point people know how to screw in servos. So, first of all I'd like to say, can you say hi Dan? Hi Dan. Thanks Dan. Um, so thanks for filming and you'll see I've kind of cheated because I don't really want to have to spend too much time editing this video. I've um, maybe already cut open this box. They, uh, this is boxed like they usually are, double boxed, quite strong. It weighs a shit ton, uh, excuse me, uh, I'll probably get uh, censored by YouTube for that. But anyway, uh, let's do the speedy unboxing. So, from there we've got the glued together hard cardboard in the box. This is the really thick, like 10 mil thick, or what's that, quarter inch thick for Americans, anyway. And here we go. Oh, I'm not playing this very well. No! There you go. So, it's a pretty big aeroplane in here. So, there are the wing bags. And if we come in a bit closer down, we'll just have a look at how everything's laid out. So, we've got a stab here. Clearly not a rudder. A stab here mounted in the front there, kept safe from everything else. Got a rudder here. Rudder? Yep. A huge rudder there. Um, I'm guessing we've got another stab somewhere under there. Going on. Some nice foam box um, guides holding everything together. Got some wheel pants. Um, they're huge. I'm guessing this is a hardware box. So. Let's start dragging things out and let's have a look. I'm kind of excited about this. So, that's a nice way to start that bit. This is a nice big stab. So, Something I've just noticed straight away is it's pretty neat that the control horns are labelled. So there'll be different horns for guessing rudder elevator, inboard, outboard ailerons. So that's going to be handy. They've already cut them out um, with the soldering iron. These are pre-hinged and the hinges have been covered over. The fitment looks pretty good. Um, the alignment of everything looks pretty good here. Um, by the looks of things, this has got the single pin Aquila's tail. Um, if we look down here, so we've got the pin slider here, and we're just going to have heads one screw up here to hold that in. So that's a really good start. And I think we may pause here for a bit for me to deconstruct this box a bit better. And once we've done that, we'll have a bit of a closer look at the contents. Through the magic of video editing, we've rearranged the set here, formerly known as the Rumpus Room, currently the plane overflow storage area. It's time to have a first look at the fuselage. So nice place to figure out. Sorry, this is going to sound awful with the headphone users. And commit to getting rid of this. With a button. We have a big fuse, so we'll start at the back here. Um, hinges are all in place. Uh, this has a removable rudder. 
Uh, Skyling ditched the um, double latches for the horizontal stab. It's just got the one. So unlocked, locked. Pin in, off we go, we're safe and ready to go. Um, if we have a look inside there, we'll see that the extension leads are already in there. Uh, they're all 20 gauge extension leads, which are nice and high quality. Um, <laughs> so there should be three in there. There'll be um, one for the rudder, one for each elevator. Um, I get that it's a bit of a decision with these if you run two rudder servos or one. I'm going to try with one and I'm going to look at the telemetry and see how hard that servo is working. Given this is going to be a mostly iMac plane, I really think that'll be adequate. So we've got a little marker here of where to cut out for the rudder servo. Obviously we're going to go push-pull, um, as is pretty much standard these days. I think the only reason you do pull-pull is if you're doing... Uh, electric and you wanted to you know move some weight forward anyway time to have a first look inside so pins out close the thing flip the pins push from the front here lift to the back and our first look inside it's got like kind of a I think Chinese manufacturing new plane smell I don't know if it's really good for you but it's kind of satisfying so we've got the usual laminated uh, plywood um, G10 and everything looks good. We've got the extension leads ready to go. Uh, my RX is gonna go probably about there. I'll be putting just a TDR18 in this. I'm gonna use the uh, Desert Aircraft multi-pin connectors there. And this has the really nice latching system they're using lately, which is idiot proof, which is really handy for someone like me. Um, so effectively, you can't put the canopy on without having the wings latched in. So the slide mechanism latches the wings in place uh, when you put the canopy on. So it's really nice. Um, looks like they've got the front pin mounts here quite thick. Um, a little tip I do I recommend is to wick some thin CA into these. Uh, when you get it, that just hardens up the wood a bit and stops them wearing too much. You'll also notice there's a CG marker on this. It's not always on the wing tube with Skywing models. So it's good to look for that. I think on the 104 inch, it's a bit behind the wing tube. It's caused some confusion for a few people. So if we look towards the front here, we've got some little uh, fuel line for your um, overflow uh, guides. So they're not gonna get cut, so they've got they just cut through the foam there, so it's nice positioning for them. And actually, there, there's a nice little feature I'm just picking up on here, which I haven't noticed before. And if we actually just roll the plane over a bit, Dan, if you can look in from the front here, they're actually running a plastic tube in here for all of your leads to the front of the plane. So we're gonna put our ignition module there uh, probably so on the inside and the other side of that. So there's some nice strap points there Running our leads out the side. If we come up here Dan, we've got grommets for them through the side so they won't have cut issues on that And if we circle back, sorry, this is probably I should do one area at a time, but I'm too easily distracted So we've got two servo slots um, Obviously, we'll just break these off because I'm gonna run a standard servo and that looks really good. So if we just keep moving forward a bit to the firewall up front, I'll just uh, make some room for you there. So if we look at the front here, we've got it pre-drilled. Um, it looks like they've had two goes at drilling this. Um, we'll see how accurate that is when I put the engine in. I'm gonna be putting a DLE 170 in mine. Um, you know, old trusted motor. I've already got some Bowman rings on it as a nice upgrade. And that's really about it. It's another little feature if we look down here, Dan, is um, you don't get a bag of screws with these. All the screws are just put in position. So that'll be the cowl mount screw. Um, up the top will be the top mount screws for the cowl. They'll be sitting in the cowling currently. But all in all, it looks really good. Um, can't wait to start putting it together. So this is the point of the video where I'm actually going to have to be honest with you and say that I was actually a bit impatient. I'd already opened the box for the wings, 
and for the canopy, uh, cowling, which is tucked away over there, in fact. So, there isn't a whole lot to say here other than it was all packed quite well. It comes in three very large boxes. Uh, this is plastic wrapped, and it looks like it's made it here in really good shape. It's quite a big wing. It really is just the scaled up. If you watched my 104 video, 104 inch video, this will look the same, except it's yellow. So if we look at some detail underneath the wing, we'll just see a few little interesting things to notice. Um, once again, we've got the labelled. Sorry about the rattling chain. That's very annoying. We've got labelled horn holes there and there, so that's going to be really handy. Effectively, what that, why that will be the way it is, is that the horn on the outside will be uh, a bit taller than the one on the inside, and that's simply because the L, the aileron is thicker as it tapers out towards the end of the wing. So if we look inside, we can see the uh, standard Skywing servo mounting, so we know which way to put the servos and which way to put the arms. Admittedly, if you put the servo arm the other way, the geometry wouldn't be very good. And we've just got good old traditional string in there uh, for running the leads. I would kind of like, given that they've done provided so much in the hardware package, it would be nice if they did include the extension leads for the wing. <coughs> but, <laughs> but having said that, uh, this does the job just fine. I, I make my own leads with power box leads, um, and that shouldn't be a problem. But it looks all good. I can see a few little bits of covering where I'm probably going to have to heat them down. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any pointy bits, if you've seen my other videos. I don't really like pointy bits on graphics. Uh, this one's fine because the blue's going over the top. But these ones here, if you just take a very sharp razor blade and trim off the points, they'll be a lot more durable and you won't have that little bit of covering film coming loose. So the first thing to do with these when you get them out of the box is to just Get your uh, covering iron, set it to about 100 degrees, not too hot. Let it come up to temp, and we just do a lap over the whole plane, um, just to make sure it's glued down properly. Because it's one thing for it to be shrunk and you know in shape, it's another thing to actually make sure it's glued on properly. So that's it for the wing. The other one is like this, but it goes on the other side of the plane. So we're probably not going to cover that in the video. No cover everything in, on the side of the hardware. I can say it includes a good quality one and a half litre fuel tank. It includes a good quality carbon spinner with an aluminium backplate. And all the linkage hardware is what we've come used to in this hobby. If you're building a 116 inch plane and a Skywing, you kind of know what to expect. So a quick look at the, can the cowling. Um, the nice thing continues of the screws are in place ready to go, so no mixing them up. If we look inside here, we can see that it's got pre-installed foam baffles. Uh, they've done the job really well for me and my other Skywing models. Uh, being foam, they're kind of nice because they'll move out of the way if you're you know, struggling to put the cowl on. I'm going to be running canisters in this plane, so all I'm going to do is open up this part of the um, cowling. Um, it has a nice little lip built into the front of it there to pull that air out. I'll also be running the cutouts in the uh, fuse. So, in this you actually have a square fuel tank. Plastic sounds awful on video, my apologies again. Let's have a quick look at this roller here. And it comes with a pretty conventional square fuel tank. Uh, my big things to note with these is that this will be our filler line here. And what, what often causes people problems in these planes, sorry, that's the overflow, this will be the filler line here, is that the, lead, the fuel hose is coming in from the side of the plane. And every time you're filling up that plane, you're pulling on that hose a bit and pushing it back in. And I found that that'll gradually loosen up the little nut behind here. So what I do is actually, I run a filter on the inlet line and I actually cable tie that into position in the airframe. We'll cover that when we get to the fuel setup on the plane, but that's something that I find stops these eventually wiggling loose. Another change we're going to have to make with this fuel tank is this fuel hose looks like quite good quality, but we still have the problem that it could bend over in flight 
find itself up the front of the tank. So we'll, I will probably run some kind of a tube over that just to stiffen it up. So that's about it for this video. I'm not going to cover it in as much detail as I have in previous ones. I kind of just wanted a quick overview of the plane and what was included. So I hope this has been useful and I hope everyone's excited about the build series. Thanks again, Dan, for filming.